What is up guys, Josh here, welcome back to part 2 of the Bunny Hill Horror Bunny Boiler. We ended off dying, because <laughs> I decided to try and run off and then fucking Rob killed me. That son of a bitch. So we're not going to run off this time, let's go to the pharmacy and see what happens then. Oh my god, this bitch works here too! Oh my god, this is the asshole in the first game. The uh, the lady who works at the front of the, the mansion or the castle thing. It's you. The words are hissed rather than spoken by your favorite receptionist, Daisy Fluffington. She sits behind a table consisting of syringes, vis vividly colored vials, and a tub of lollipops. I'll bet Len let you out, didn't he? You notice posters on the wall and a brand new book in a waste paper bin. The doorway is marked dispensary. Dispensary? Ooh, can I kill her with the darts, please? Yeet. Okay. You're a nurse now. What are you doing? Can I have a lollipop, please? Check bin, posters, dispensary, leave pharmacy. Okay. I will just go down the list, I guess. No, I'm not. A, I'm not just some bedpan emptying bimbo. I'm the lead pharmaceutical consulting administrator. What does that mean, you ask? Well, the first thing it means is that you'd better watch your step. If you don't return to your lowly duties in the castle immediately, it will go very hard with you. What are you doing? What am I doing? Who are you to ask? Daisy spends a few seconds composing herself, and a smile that doesn't quite reach her eyes appears. I'm helping people. You'll have heard reports of troubled folk using new drugs and becoming aggressive or catatonic. Catatonic. <laughs> These can be ingested by accident, from touching contaminated surfaces or by breathing in the dust from the, la the tabs. I'm offering employees shots of terrea, ter which gives resistance against these events. Would you like one? You've been such a great help, it's what you deserve. And it comes with a lolly. Daisy's smile, Daisy's smile could no longer be any wider, to with, wider without some sort of surgery. Yes, I'd love a shot, thank you. I feel like I'm being, I'm gonna be a hamster here. Fuck it, we're gonna... I died again, didn't I? <laughs> without waiting an instant, Daisy moves around the desk, ties a plastic band tightly... Okay, now I'm for sure dead, aren't I? <laughs> what the fuck? When your arm and gouges a vein with her syringe and you wake up dazed in the car park, you're angry about this. Very angry. But it's okay. With an onslaught of adrenaline, you know you could take on the world. Starting with the meat you can see outside the pub, you charge snarling towards the figure, but two gunshots fell you. They're just pinpricks though, and you get back up. A third bullet is fired, and you die. Not a nice way to go, was it? It was also a bit of a silly decision, if you don't mind me saying. Well, have another go and see if you can keep your wits about you better this time. I love the death comments that they add here. Like this, this, the, the sarcastic remarks. Not a nice way to go, was it? It was also a bit of a silly decision. I like that stuff. It makes the game a lot more funny and interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's try again. I guess we're not going to be accepting a shot. Uh, can I have a lollipop, please? Daisy fixes you with a look of horror, as if you suggested she join you in the disabled toilet for 10 minutes. No, this is my lollipops. As if a de demonstration was needed, she takes a lime green one up from the tub and crunches down on it. Crunches down on it? You're not supposed to crunch down on a fucking lollipop? You psychopath? Let's check the bin. The brightly colored book dumped in the bin is titled, uh, My First Chemistry Book, and is recommended for primary school children. There's a note attached to the front which reads, My dear friend Daisy, you're a nurse now, very enchanting. I thank you English with your strange funny humor. What? It is the joke, no? You are my assistant. Very mirthful. I do bestow the book to help you. Is my joke a funny also? Most kind regards, Dr. Krova. Krova, is that Russian? You are a nurse now. Very enchanting. Uh, what, what the fuck is a Russian? What do Russians sound like? You are a nurse now. Very enchanting. I think you English with your strange funny humor. Is the joke, no? You are my assistant. Very mirthful. I do bestow the book to help you. Is my joke funny also? I I just me, 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 melded fucking three <laughs> three different fucking accents together there. Okay, check posters. Oh my god, Oswald Mandius, stay indoors. Save lives like yours. The poster advises you to stay indoors. Save lives like yours. It appears to have been designed by someone who just discovered word art. Yes, it does, very much so. I love this one. Oh, and they got the little, the little wavy font as well. Um, this sentiment Mercia Co. cares is illustrated by the sinister figure of Oswald Mandius offering a rose. Do you, Oswald Mandius, accept this rose? Uh, what else? We gotta go to the dispensary. You enter the dispensary to see several pharmacists at work. In the back of a woman with surgical gloves who responds to your footsteps with some irritation. I again read 
the source for you, but can't give the new reply. Nothing. Zilch, diddly squat. We have no new Terea. Terea. <laughs> Production is toilsome. One vial for Mandy's family is only we have. The, the accent sounds European. Oh, European. Same thing. But you have no idea where exactly. Talk to woman. Unsure how to proceed, you cough and the woman turns around. Oh, you are not Daisy. That brings me much vivacity. You're a new researcher, yes? I am Dr. Krova. It is the pleasure to acquaint you. Uh, cool. Examine poster. The poster is a colorful mind map style headed the Mercy of Drugs family. Apparently designed for the staff. It reads, sleep drink. Sleep drink. Causes catatonia. Subject score. Uh, above 8 on Glasgow coma scale. Good response to Terea. And nothing else is effective. Fen drink. Warrior drink. Causes excess strength and aggression. Subjects uncontrollable and indiscriminate in ultra violence. Good response to Terea. Nothing else. Medigal. Hallucinogenic. Addictive. 80% of Mercia Co. income. But. Politic. Protection is not the infinite. Terea. Prophylactic. Prophylactic and antidote. Production is priority number one. Manufacture most intensive and unstable. So, take care. Uh, scrap of paper. Pick up the paper and unravel it. Dear Dr. Kurova, you've only been on this team for a month and it regrets me to inform you that I am already concerned about your disrespectful jokes and unprofessional attitude. Rest assured, as your superior, I have escalated this matter to Sire Mandius, who sets great stock by my, my opinion. You're not as essential to this operation as you appear to think you are, so please comport your comport yourself in a comport uh, in a more appropriate manner in the future. Kind regards, Daisy Fluffington, B A E C D L, Senior Secretary to His Lordship of Mercia, Lead Pharmaceutical Consulting Administrator. Fucking bitch, I hate Daisy. Goddamn. Let's go to the safe. Safe is locked, and it requires a four-digit combination to open. No, you correct yourself. A four-letter combination. Neither Dr. Kurova nor the other pharmacists seem to care that you're examining the safe, but that doesn't help you with the code. Curiously, a sachet of salt is taped to the top. S-A-L-T. Go. Wrong. Try salt, but nothing happens. Deep down, you knew it was never going to be that easy. God fucking damn it. I'm, I'm just holding the drinks with me this entire time, aren't I? Okay, let's uh, leave the pharmacy. We'll go back to the pub quickly. Uh, the bar, and then the condiments, because this is where the salt was, isn't it? Um, pick a pot. Oh, sodium, sodium chloride. That's probably what it's got to be, right? Maybe? Sodium chloride? Uh, NaCl, right? Nope. It's probably not the code. That, I think that's probably too easy as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be too easy. Interesting. Very interesting. It's just like, this is the only thing that kind of tells us about salt, isn't it? Salt, 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 salt. Poster. Maybe it's going to be somewhere in here. Okay, we're gonna worry about this later, I think. Guess we'll just go to the dry cleaners then. Try the dry cleaners, but it's locked. Hearing noises from above, you realize that a door next to the entrance is open and leads to a narrow flight of stairs. I guess we'll go up. Okay, hello. You climb the creaky stairs and barely have time to take in the cramped office space. When you find your hand being vigorously pummeled and a face far too close to yours... What? Hi there, comrade in arms, aha! I'd bet cash to gash that you'll be the new research assistant. Pleasure to meet you, my name's Teza. And any friend of Teza's is a friend of mine, haha. <laughs> Once you can wrestle your hands free, you examine the office to see three other desks, one of which is vacant and lifeless as the woman occupying the other two. Uh, what do you do up here? Bean counting, mon capain. Baked beans, kidney beans, limas, all there. Ah, sorry, I don't, I don't half spout some danglers, do I? That's what happens when you're almost off a 12 hour shift and the pub quiz is coming up. You'd better be there to see our triumphant victory. I'll be the one up front shouting out the answers and embarrassing my teammates. Isn't that right ladies, haha. <laughs> the dull murmur in response doesn't <laughs> dampen Tezza's spirits, but you realize that further questioning is unlikely to be helpful. Unless you want to know more about beans. Uh, let's check the empty desk I guess. Although the chair is empty, it appears that uh, its unusual occupant has just popped out. Coat and a handbag hang over the chair while a cup of half-drunk tea and then I love spreadsheets mug competes for space on a crowded desk. The monitor has gone to sleep. Uh, we'll give them the note after. Let's finish looking at all this stuff. Screen comes to life revealing an email message timestamped half an hour ago. 
Uh, Dear Miss Flowers, although we recently administered the medicine to, re uh, to you as a prophylactic against the potential drug exposure, we have noticed discrepancies in the volume of your dose. We will report to the pharmacy immediately for another shot. Kind regards, Daisy Fluff Fluffington, B.A.E.C.D.L., Senior Secretary to His Lordship of Mercia, Lead Pharmaceutical Consulting Administrator. Jeez. Careful there, haha, <laughs> says Tezza, who has appeared right behind you and puts an arm around your shoulder to steer you away. You don't know what you might find in these emails. They're a crazy lot. Could be personal. Well, the cat's away and all that, haha. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> you echo <laughs> as he shuts down the computer and looks for an uncomfortably long time at the mug of tea, which is going cold. I don't know. Okay, whatever. It doesn't seem like there's much information that I could get there. Uh, Tezza's screen, I guess. The computer's background features a cartoon sheep wearing a motorboard. <coughs> a mortar board. Mortar board. Duh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And declaring, your best teacher is your last mistake. The window is open, which contains the text. You've do me a job. Okay. Tezza quickly minimizes this to reveal a movie of two extremely friendly blonde, blonde ladies, which he also hastily removes. Extremely friendly blonde ladies, huh? How are you watching porn in your office with the other workers there at the same time? Why would. Despite your intrigue, you feel that remembering the cryptic message will be a huge waste of time. I agree, probably. I guess we just leave. Ah, oh, I didn't even. I got a fucking. Alright. Why me, O'Reilly? The big Wednesday himself sent you. The research assistants must be running. Run ragged. No wonder the last three vanished in a puff of smoke. Speaking of, I'm sure I can magic up the downstairs key for you. Hey, presto, et voila. Taking the key from Tezza's outstretched hand, you consider what cocaine really. Do you consider that cocaine really is a terrible drug? <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we go to the dry cleaners now. Uh, use the key. Uh, enter. You enter the dark dry cleaners and have to reassure yourself that the hundreds of arms and legs that surround you are only lifeless fabric. Turn on light. I was like scared for a split second there that something was gonna pop out. <laughs> With an electric hum, the lights flicker on, then off, then on again. And the shop puts you in mind of a jumble sale with a few washing machines stacked on top of each other. Luckily, Oswald Mandius' outfit is waiting on the counter, and you take this, the black velvet coat, overcoat, red dandy shirt, and top hat, which represent a good clunk, good clunk, what the fuck, a good chunk of his carefully crafted reputation. Okay, so we got the clothes. There's nothing else we could do in here, though. Is there no way to find the safe code? I've already asked all these. Before you check this bin, I don't, this poster isn't that helpful, scrap paper, paper, paper isn't that helpful, poster isn't helpful, a sachet, is that, did I say sachet? Isn't that word sachet? Am I just stupid? Coke. Damn. You know what, I thought the sachet of salt might be just like cocaine, you know? Man, difficult, difficult puzzle. Okay, we're just gonna leave for now, I guess we'll just go back to the pub, um, and then, I got, what if I go back to the bar and talk to her? Oh wait, I gotta go to my friends and give them the drinks. Finally, says Dave, taking his pint of stout. Are we all set? Is she okay? Asks Claire, who sips her neon cocktail and subtly nods in Elf's direction. Kind of, you say. She helped me escape the castle, but she also knew her sister was in the cells. Cells, says Dave. What kind of hellish place did you drag us to? You decide that pointing out to Dave that he did all the dragging would be a waste of breath. That's fair enough. What am I supposed to do with the darts? Is there anywhere I could use it? Uh, I don't know. Doesn't look like it, at least. Back to the pub. Game starts, no? Okay. I guess the staff room, right? You enter the staff room to be rewarded with the stern look of Oswald Mandius, who's pulled the bedsheets further up. Well, he demands. I sincerely hope you've been able to carry out your simple instructions. What were they again? What were they? I'm about to make an announcement of historical significance, and you cannot even go to the dry cleaners and fetch my attire? Get to it now. I've got it, you bitch. Now you look like an idiot, man. Hate you. Good. Ozzy's expression softens. So all that's left is for Len to set up the equipment. If he's done so, we can begin. Oh, regrettably, there's one more problem. A member of staff has made a complaint about your appearance. She, sorry, he or she feels that your charity shop suit is not in fitting with tone of the Clayton Tavern, and I concur. 
Need a form has been arranged for you. Collect this and report back to me. Um. Collect from where? I also have the darts still. Uh, but obviously, she is elf, right? You notice that Ozzy's had a chance to tidy up since your last visit. Although the newspapers and empty bottles are still scattered about, the paperwork is now out of view as if to keep it from the unwelcome prying eyes. Such as yours. This is a mug. Yes, yes it is. Cool. Cool. Games bar. Uh, what if we talk to him now? Uh, can you help us with the quiz? Yeah, sure. The thing about the quiz is that all the questions and answers are made up. But I've seen enough to know how it all works. Len pauses, looks away, and scratches his neck. Yes, you prompt? Really sorry about this, but can I ask you a favor? As well as the zombie drug, Frederick, they manufacture something they call Medugal in the pharmacy. I'm on their blacklist now. Could you get me some? It's just, I'm under a lot of stress right now. Why not go? Not that simple. Len's expression becomes grim. Ozzy needs soldiers. This is the only guns he has are museum pieces of that jam half the time. Haven't I already gone through this? And he'll do that with you. you... Okay, so, um, so I gotta, uh, I gotta get him some Medigal. Okay, Medigal. Sounds good. Um, so, oh, she's gone. Okay. The bar is now unattended and the patrons have taken it upon themselves to make it a self-service, pouring their own drinks and leaving the money on the counter. If any miss having elf to serve them, serve them, they can at least console themselves by the fact that most of their drink is no longer going straight into the drip tray. <laughs> this is true, I guess. Okay, I guess we gotta leave and we'll go and try and get his Medigal. Um, but we're gonna be doing this... Ah, now we can ask about the Medigal. We're gonna be doing this in the next episode... Hope you're all enjoying this as much as I am. Pretty fun so far. And I'm excited for, uh, to continue it. If you did enjoy, please like, comment down below, and subscribe for more content from this channel. I mean, you don't have to, but like, at least give it a, a little bit of consideration, you know? That'd be nice. Hopefully we can get this Medigal drug in the next episode and maybe figure out the safe code as well. Because I wonder how uh, important that is to the story. But um, yeah, once again, hope you all enjoyed. And I'll see you all in the next one. Josh, yeah.